Hello, my friend. This is Clyde, blessed and highly favored. You've heard this before. Many people walk around and say, I am blessed and highly favored. Let us talk about you and seek to understand this popular phrase. There are some people who throw this phrase around as if it is a blanket that they can casually cover themselves with. Somehow, we feel that this is one more catchphrase that we can spiritualize and automatically we will have a good life. We think that we can use some earth realm psychology and God and he will automatically make it come into reality. How are you today? One person asked. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, says the other. What does, what does that even mean? First of all, in order to speak this of yourself, you need to be a child of God. The child of God is blessed and highly favored. That is the reality of every person who has been born again. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Did you know that? Every child of God has been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Now, we don't have the time to break down every piece of this powerful statement, but let us look at certain things to help us understand that this is relevant only to certain people. The second chapter of Ephesians starts off with a discussion about our salvation. It talks about people who were dead in their sins. That would be you. That would be me. The writer takes us back to the before life. He says that we used to follow the ways of the world, the pursuit of pleasure as what Paul calls the acts of the flesh, which includes sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, and a list of other things. Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21. He made it clear that before Christ came into our lives, we were on one track, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its desires and thoughts. What should have been the outcome of such a life? We were deserving of God's wrath, or stated another way, the wages of sin, which is death. That should have been the logical conclusion of our lives. But God loves us so much that through the act of redemption that Jesus brought us into, we have been made alive in Christ. Remember we were dead in trespasses and in sins? Being alive in Christ means we have inherited the gift of God, which is eternal life. Hold on, hold on. Don't jump yet. You need to hear this. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 and verse 6. Do you want to hear that again? When you gave your life to Jesus, when you were born again, God raised you up from the spiritual grave that you were in, and he gave you a kind of new life that results in you being spiritually elevated to a seat in the heavenly realms, and all because of Jesus who died for you. So now, if you are seated in heavenly places, let us go back to Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Those persons who are born again, those persons who, by virtue of being saved by Jesus, your number one distinct nice experience is that you're now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That sounds like a massive promotion. And because you are in this high place, it comes with favors, huge favors. In this case, he speaks clearly that you are blessed and highly favored. I'm talking about grace. I'm talking about abundant life. I'm talking about benefits that come with your status. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. Please do not limit this to dollars and cents. That would mean that every person with a healthy financial portfolio is seated in heavenly places. By no means. This does not mean that you are exempt from sickness or you can't lose your job or you won't die. This is far more than just that, although those are parts of it. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalm 84 verse 11, the Amplified Version. How is your walk? Jesus talks about following the good shepherd. So if our walk is translated that we are following Jesus, then it makes sense that we will be experiencing good things. 
please get it that you shall not want because your reality is found in Psalm 23. In part, it says that he leads me in green pastures, good things. He leads me beside the still waters, good things. When I go through the dark and dismal circumstances, his rod and staff comfort me, good things. Then I come to the table spread before me and where? In the presence of my enemies, good thing. I will just cap this off by pointing out that goodness and mercy will follow you, you who are born again, all the days of your life. If you are not a sheep who belongs to the good shepherd, you cannot say that goodness and mercy will follow you. You cannot say that you are blessed and highly favored. He says that no good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly, those who are following the good shepherd. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. The one who is blessed and highly favored has the privilege of the Holy Spirit living inside of him. And he is amazing. He protects you. He guides you into all things. He transports your prayers to heaven. He constantly reminds you that you're a child of God. I love the Holy Spirit. And mind you, these are just a few of the amazing and marvelous things that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The last blessing I want to talk about is that you are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. Romans 8 and verse 37. You are a winner. So now, do you understand that saying you are blessed and highly favored is a term reserved for the child of God who is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the person who is walking uprightly before the Lord? You now have God's permission to say that over your life.